Kia ora, welcome to Women in Data Science Auckland 2020. This year's event is an online series of talks featuring women sharing stories about their career contributions across many industries. WITS Auckland is an independent event organised by the University of Auckland Faculty of Engineering to coincide with the annual Global Women in Data Science Conference. I'm Kate Collich, WITS Ambassador, and I'm delighted to be here to help share these inspiring stories. Today's speaker is Dr. Ofa Kitu, Program Manager, Pacific Statistics at Stats NZ, Gold Sponsor for WIDS Auckland 2020. Ofa currently manages the Pacific Statistics Support Program, which is part of the Data and Analytics Consulting Team at Stats NZ. Her passion is building capability and confidence among Pacific statistical officers to use statistics to tell their own national stories and inform decisions that affect people's day-to-day -day lives. Offa has had an extensive data leadership career across the Pacific and New Zealand, and she shares highlights from her career journey in this inspirational talk. Fiora and Malo Lili. It is an honour to talk at this conference about why I am very passionate about being a Pacific data scientist. And I hope my story will encourage more young Pacific women to become data scientists both in New, in New Zealand and around the world and even in the Pacific. One thing that I just want to state at the outset, think of yourself as being the most powerful person in the room because you have statistics and data to back your viewpoint. That's the ultimate benefit of being a data scientist. Before I delve into my um, talk today, I just want to take a bit of time and, and define what data scientists mean. I look up in the, uh, on the website uh, to look for definition just to make sure that I am correct. And the definition that I found says, a uh, data scientist is a person that's employed to analyze and interpret complex data and statistics in order to assist a business in its decision making. In my own words, this is how I define data scientist. It's someone who can unpack and interrogate statistics and data to tell his or her own stories, articulate her viewpoint, or to inform key decisions that affect people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So I have varied the definition of data scientist to fit my own situation, but also to make it more practical and applicable on a day-to-day -day basis. So what made me want to be a Pacific data scientist and why? Uh, my passion to become a, a data scientist emerged from my interest in unpacking data and statistics to tell stories, to help inform stories, and sometimes to articulate my own viewpoint, either at work or in the community or in my own family. And this started at a very early stage of my own career, when I became the first Tongan to manage the research department of the Reserve Bank of Tonga in the 90s. Tonga has a very, uh, it's a very small economy and a very small community. And you get to know almost everyone in town. So being the director of the research department of the Reserve Bank is quite a big thing. So, and I had the privilege to stand up in front of the bankers, head of government departments, business owners and private sector and report on the latest state of the economy and to provide them with forecasts for the next 12 months. And this is something I'm always very proud and look forward for because I stand in the room and I feel the most powerful person in the room because I talk about the token economy and I pack it with statistics and data that nobody else knows about. Anyway, at the end of every presentation, the bank, even the government departments, they have to change their plan and even their forecast based on what I tell them. And that's what makes me so proud. And I do this on a, on a quarterly basis and, and I never miss an event in the 10 years I work at the Reserve Bank of Tonga. I always want to be there and, and feel very, very powerful in, in, in telling the Tongan economy to the, to the audience that I have. 
And I always feel very confident because I know my report, my story, and my viewpoint will always be very powerful and convincing because I have the statistics and the data that I needed. One story that I continue to, to cherish and be very proud of when I was a director of the Reserve Bank of Tonga was uh, how I powerfully used statistics to defend my viewpoint as director of the research department. Tonga is a very small um, economy with very minimal exports, but rely heavily on imports for its domestic market, especially food items and fuel. This means that the government and the Reserve Bank of Tonga had to monitor its foreign reserves very closely just to make sure it doesn't drop below the free, equivalent of three months import. So it was like a big thing in Tonga and in the small island that we have to monitor our reserve, our foreign reserve on a day-to-day -day basis. And that includes understanding what are our main source of foreign exchange. So when I came to the Reserve Bank, there was a strong belief among the, the senior management and even in government that our main source of foreign earnings is from import, is from export, like our fish, our squash, our root crops. And then I challenged that view and I said, no, it's not. The, the foreign earnings, the most significant foreign earnings for Tonga is from the remittances from Pacific and from Tongan who lives abroad. These are relatives who stay in New Zealand, in Australia, in the United States, who will send money back to their parents or to their families during times of funeral and also wedding and birthdays. And I said to them, I said to the governor of the Reserve Bank of the day, I said, I do not agree with you. I believe the most source of income, foreign earnings for Tonga is from remittances. And of course, I look at the statistics and it was true enough the level of foreign reserves that we got of foreign earnings from remittance almost double and even triple the amount of foreign earnings that we got from uh, from export. And so that really, you know, it motivates me to continue to unpack and interrogate statistics and data. And I know I was going to be very powerful because I know my statistics, but I also know how to use it. So at the end, it was very convincing to the governor and to the, the, the Ministry of Finance of Tonga. And so we started to change our focus, not just on export earnings, but also on remittances from Tongans living abroad. And, and so the policy um, focus was changing and even led to myself and a few team from Tonga who came to New Zealand and to the United States just to study our Tongan community overseas and to understand why and what makes them send money back to Tonga. So that's a story that I'm very proud of and, and it emerged from my being able to understand, to use, but also to interpret statistics and data. And that's something that I would like to encourage, not just the Pacific women, but women overall, use statistics to defend your story, to defend your viewpoint and to articulate also your viewpoint. So that is some of the very powerful story, and I only pick a few today because of the time. But uh, I continue to face um, those lovely and powerful stories when I have to defend it, I use statistics. Now, how I became a data scientist and how Statistics New Zealand have grown me to become a very passionate Pacific data scientist. I have worked at um, Statistics New Zealand for over 17 years now, so you can imagine how Stats New Zealand have molded my belief, my passion, and also my, my mission uh, for the rest of my career path. Um, to start off with, Stats New Zealand is, um, is very different. Um, and it kind of departs from the uh, traditional role of a statistics office, which is just to compile and produce statistics and put it out there and their job is done. Stats New Zealand has taken a a new path and I believe that's where the rest of the world and all the state's office should do is very much not just collect and compile statistics but also try and disseminate and also to inform policies that are made on a day-to-day -day basis and that's where states New Zealand operated. Um, if you can look at the state mission, the mission statement of uh, states New Zealand, it says unleashing the power of data to change lives. 
and this mission statement resonates with me because I love, I'm, I'm very good and I'm very, I believe in collecting quality data, but my passion is in using and interpreting those statistics to inform day-to-day -day decision that impact the lives of people around you. And that's the mission statement of Stats New Zealand and that reflect Stats New Zealand wanting to not just collect statistics but also take it out there to the policy decision makers so that they can use it to inform their own decision. So Stats New Zealand, as I've said, is one of those national stats offices that um, modernize the role of a statistics office. And they do that on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a team that um, all they do is to, to liaise and also to interface with the user of statistics in New Zealand so that they can understand and to help them find and use statistics in the right way. So this passionate about using statistics to inform decision is kind of something that's in me. Um, in, nine, in 2016 to 2019, I, I was made, uh, I was sent to the uh, Pacific community in Numea, New Caledonia. And this is a regional organization that um, provide technical support um, to the Pacific uh, member countries. And I went there as the director of um, statistics division in that uh, organization. And what I did, I, when I went there, I realized that they focus on providing technical support to collect statistics among the, the Pacific Island. And I said to myself, no, they can't just continue collect statistics. They have to use those statistics to inform decision making. And if they don't, then what's the point? What's the point of collecting a lot of data and statistics if they do not use it? So what I did, I engaged the, the division in a review and, and the review was very much to shift the focus from data collection to data dissemination. And so I even changed the mission statement of the, of the division at SPC. So on their website, even today, the mission statement of the statistics division of SPC goes, trusted Pacific data supporting well-informed policy decision that help improve Pacific people's lives. So that mission statement, I, I developed it during the time when I was heading the uh, division, the statistics division in New Caledonia, uh, New Mea. And of course, that means I had to articulate why am I doing this? And I had to inform the MFED and DFED, who were the main donors of, um, of this particular organization. And I, I said to them, unless the Pacific country use statistics to inform their decision, it's very difficult to, to justify why they continue to produce those statistics. So after I did that, I, I realized that the government statistician in the Pacific were still in that mentality of producing statistics day in, day out. And for them, once they compile and when they, when they finish the data and produce it and put it out there, it looks like that's when their job is done. But I said to them, no, it's not. That's just the beginning of your job is when you produce statistics. Government statistician has to be out there and inform, you know, the, the, the policy makers like um, Secretary for Finance, the business people, the private sector, all the, the, the people out there need the statistics, but they need to know how to use it and how to access it. So over the three years that I work at the, uh, at the SBC, I, I was able to articulate, but also to change and to let a lot of a change in the Pacific, shifting the focus from just data collection to data analysis and dissemination. And to me, I was very, very proud that um, when I left uh, SPC last year, there were a lot more awareness of the data that we produce and how to use, but also how to access that. So in terms of being a data scientist, it's not just producing the statistics, you also have to be able to, to get it to the user in the way that they want it. And you also have to help them on how to tell stories using statistics. So I, with that in mind, I thought that in the Pacific, 
uh, we need to encourage our government statistician to be able to get out to the, for example, I give this example, when the parliament opened, it would be really nice to see government statistician sitting from the front and update the parliamentarian of a small island and tell them, this is our story for the nation as we start. It's so important. And that's what I believe ultimately the role of the government statistician is to be out there telling stories based on statistics and data. Um, in, in, in having that, um, that notion and that belief, I invited uh, Dr. Pali Lahola. He is the former statistician of South Africa and a very prominent figure in the statistics world. I think right now he's a, he's a consultant to the UN. So he came, he came all the way from Africa to Numea to speak to the government statistician meeting of the, the Pacific nation. And something that I pick up from his, uh, from his very powerful speech, he said to the government statistician, as government statistician or data scientist, you have a dual role. And that is to know your statistics, but also know your audience and your politician. And you need to be able to tell your story so that at the end, you can convince your audience. And he brought home the idea that I wanted to end my story today is that the importance of using statistics in the right way to tell your story in a way that convinces your audience. That was a very powerful speech, but also um, Dr. Lahola is a very, very prominent figure and he claimed himself to be very powerful. Why? Because he knew the statistics of Africa, he hold it in his department, and he know how to use it and interpret it to tell the story of the country. So, like I said at the beginning of my, uh, my speech today, Dr. Lahola know that he's the most powerful person in Africa because he know what, what's going on in the country. And he hold on to it. And everywhere he goes, he speak about Africa in a very powerful way because he's got his statistics on his right hand and then he's also got how to talk about it um, on the other hand. So that's something that, uh, that really um, resonated with me why I like being a data scientist um, and bringing it back to the Pacific community and to the Pacific people, it's so relevant, it's so important. For example, at Statistics New Zealand, we, I led the uh, 2006 um, census uh, Pacific strategy, meaning that I was responsible for engaging the Pacific people in New Zealand with States New Zealand in preparing for the 2006 um, census in the country. So how did we manage to engage the Pacific people? One thing that I understood about our people is that we need to tell them what's in it for them, what's in that number that is important for, for the Pacific people in New Zealand. So one of the story that we told our Pacific people, and it resonates with them, you need to count yourself in this country to be able to be counted by the government of New Zealand. If you do not let yourself be counted, then you are not you are not existing in New Zealand. For example, and we and I use this story. Um, if you live in a community of uh, Pacific people, say in Polyrua in Wellington or Mangere in South Auckland then you need to know your number to justify, for example, if you want a preschool or if you want a church or if you want a hall, you need to be able to articulate your funding proposal by packing it with the number of people that stay in that particular area. And usually when we get the, uh, the, the number from the census, there's a lot of undercount for the Pacific people, unfortunately. So in 2006, that was some of the key story that we had to tell our people is that you must be counted, you must fill in the form, the census form, so that you are counted in New Zealand. And of course, we were able to raise the response rate from the Pacific people from um, 85, 86% to over 90% in 2006. And that was a major um, achievement and successful story for States New Zealand is being able to turn around the, the Pacific and the Maori people to fill in the census form so that they can provide the, the statistics 
um, not just to states New Zealand, but to the government of New Zealand. And so with me, it's something that um, it's part of my life and part of my, uh, my career and my passion that whatever I do or wherever I, I go and work, I always articulate the importance of using data and statistics to pack up your story, to articulate your point, but also to be able to tell the right story to your audience. And I have, have I've got with me these particular statistics that I thought that I'll quote today uh, from the uh, from the website of the SPC. It goes. Pacific women and girls with disability are two to three times more likely to be victims of physical or sexual abuse. I read it again. Pacific women and girls with disability are two to three times more likely to be victims of physical or sexual abuse. And isn't that powerful? Just the statistics itself, it tells a very, very powerful story. And this particular line that I have read out has, has taken a lot of attention within the Pacific and among many development partners working in the Pacific to, to pay more attention to, um, to victim of physical and sexual abuse. Um, and, and that's the kind of how powerful statistics can become. So finally, I, I just want to go back and, and acknowledge um, States New Zealand. I think States New Zealand has modernized the role of a statistics office by not only focusing on data collection and production, but also adding value by getting out there and engage with our audience, with the stakeholder, with New Zealand, to get them uh, to use statistics. One thing that I really enjoy listening to the Prime Minister of today in New Zealand, um, how she keeps saying um, that we are a team of five million. You know, it's correct. That has statistics. In New Zealand right now, the estimate total population of New Zealand is around five million. And, and she keeps saying that, and I keep saying to my family, hey, look, the Prime Minister is using statistics to tell our story. And I, I resonate with, and I, you know, I embrace it when she keeps saying, we are a team of five million, but that's the statistics. You know, she could have been wrong and say, we are a team of three million. No, we are a team of five million. And she knows her statistics and she knows how to use it. And it reached out and it's, it's really um, powerful. Not that I, um, I want to promote any particular um, political uh, view here, but, but just using the statistics in the right way. Oh, I just love that. Uh, finally, I um, I have to say that um, at Statistics New Zealand, that's our that's our, our goal, is to be able to get out there and engage the user of statistics so that they can use it more. And I very much focus on the Pacific people in New Zealand, and every opportunity that I have, I try and help Pacific people in New Zealand to know that there are statistics relevant for them they can access it and they can use it to articulate their viewpoint, to articulate their challenges, but also to tell the successful story that we have made in this country. Um, so once again, I am very delighted and I am very happy to take any question. Um, otherwise, I just want to, um, to wrap up my, uh, my talk today by encouraging people out there. You do not have to have a degree in data science you just need to be passionate, you need to understand statistics, and you need to know how to use it to tell your story, to inform policy decisions that affect your life and your community, but also to articulate your viewpoint. That's how powerful you can become when you know how to use data to inform your story. Thank you. Malo Alpito.